All right, so uh, we'll get this started. Uh, continuing on our um, Pro University, uh, sponsored by Pro Air. Thank you so much, Donna, for uh, facilitating this. Um, I'm, getting, I'm getting some echo here, sorry. All right, sorry about that. Um, had a technical difficulties here. But uh, like I was saying, the, um, thank you very much, Donna, for um, putting together this uh, pro university uh, for us um, artists that are in quarantine at the moment. But we still have that urge to, um, to learn more, you know? So um, again, thank you very much, Donna and Pro Air for that. Um, let's see here probably introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Sig. Um, uh, my name is Sig Abrin. I go by Sig. Um, I've been an airbrush artist for a little over uh, almost 20 years now. And um, I work at Coast Airbrush. Uh, it's a small airbrush uh, place, brick and mortar airbrush place in Anaheim, California. We deal with a lot of airbrush and airbrush supplies. Uh, our, our, uh, first time I met Donna was at IMAX, maybe it was like 2000 and what is that, 14 maybe, 2015. And um, first time I used her product, it was amazing. I was blown away by her product. Also, um, and that was like the first time I met Dutch, Dutch as well. So um, that was at IMAX and that just kind of reinvigorated my love for body painting. And um, I started airbrushing about maybe 20 years ago and um, I moved on from canvas to now metal and then also I do also paint on bodies as well. And I, I mean, before the virus hits, um, I, you, I come with live body painter, specializing in events and um, costume couture. So I make, um, I make headpieces to complement my body painting. And let me give you a tour. Uh, Some of these people are watching already. Okay, cool. So let me give you like a little tour of like my studio. Um, let's see here. So I have. These are my. That's my setup. So this is my setup, and okay, hold on, pardon me. So that's is uh, my setup. It's a design that I uh, that um, Donna pioneered. What I a little bit refined. So I have a holder in here. Oh, and I have my paints and my ever loyal stencils that will that will use in a bit um, I also have my sneak in here some of my creations right here that's my latest one that I have And this is actually, I got into um, the head pieces under the, the tutelage of Alex Hansen. Alex Hansen says, hi. Hello, Alex. Buongiorno. And uh, so my skills actually progress uh, just by being alongside with one of the best uh, in the industries, which is good. You know, it's good to just kind of align yourself and then just uh, be within the company of people who you think that are that you have a lot of things to learn and people who are actually you know a bit better than you, which is good. And that just raises your bar uh, as, as, as far as an artist is concerned. Um, so these are my things right here and it's in my small studio space and it's in my little old garage. So, okay. And let's see here, to here, okay. Sorry about the wiggly stuff. All right, and let's uh, 
get you in here. Pardon me, quick. Let me just uh, extend this thing. All right. Uh, all right. So, what we're doing right now is uh, what I'm here for is basically to teach you the basics. A lot of the times, people tend to forget. Um, pretty much what I mean what an airbrush can do and then what it is is like the especially working at Coast Airbrush the most common thing that I've encountered as far as um, concerns are cons uh, concerned is usually the frustration when people started airbrushing or people who, who have been airbrushing for a certain number of years and then they pick up skills and what happens is that they the, the skills to kind of sets aside it gets it kind of left aside on, on the wayside you know um with with the skills that i'm going to be showing today i am um this is i mean i've been using these skills for i uh, for the longest time i i warm this is how i warm up um i still use them to this to the uh, to this day and um i hope you can um you can take away what you can take away is that it, it's Essentially, it's like a muscle, you know, you, 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 you got to work at it and then you, you have to have a, sh a sharp trigger dexterity with that is that if you have a sharp enough trigger dexterity is that the frustration factor is low. Um, you're not cleaning out your gun as, as, as much as well as, um, you know, you, you, you have a, a better, smoother dynamic where you can actually have the work flow through you, you without any interruptions without any um uh, we, we have to you have to just clean out your gun and then moving from one color to the other um even if you're mixing media which means that if you're mixing like putting water base on top of alcohol base on top of hybrid you know as long as you have those basics you can mix the media not mix them into the cup itself but actually um hi andrea uh, but, um, you know, put it one on top of the other, that would kind of get your workflow down to where you can do, a, a, I, mean, I mean, a full body paint in, in, in such a short amount of time. And at the same time, provide, number one, the client, um, you know, that you, that you, um, that you are um, commissioned to do that it, it, they're not extending the time for, for, for them for like, if I'm doing, let's say a performer or something where they have the call time is like 10 o'clock or something. And by, I mean, you're, 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 you're doing your, uh, you're painting your client up, up to the minute, you know? So, um, with that said, let's, um, let's check out our equipment, shall we? All right, let's see here. So what I usually, what I use, ooh, sorry, are, a certain let me get you in here real quick uh, hold on okay Sorry for the wigglies. All right. So this is pretty much my arsenal. Um, I have the Ever Trustful Iwatas. Um, you can use any guns pretty much. I mean, I've, I've had the luxury, especially working at Coast Airbrush, to use multiple guns. I first started with a Pache VL and it works great, you know. Uh, it was it was one of my favorite guns, and then when when Iwata came out with a lower cost guns, because previously they were actually more expensive, they came out with their general purpose gun, which is their their, their Eclipse C BCS. Which is their double action, um, which is their double action bottom feed gun. It's a siphon feed gun where the paint flows from the bottom part of the gun. Let me uh, get my sound up here for some reason. Okay. All right. All right. So, uh, 
Anybody can hear, everybody can hear me there? Sorry, I have my volume turned out a little bit here. Okay, so I have a double action siphon feed gun. This is my, usually my go-to guns, Iwatas. Um, you can go for, like I said, you can go for a Pache, you can go for a Harder and Steenback. Donna sells a great intro set that actually has an inexpensive gun to just kind of start off with. Get your feet uh, wet, um, you know, wet your appetite a little bit, and then move up to a, uh, you know, move up to a better tool where you have that gives you a little bit more versatility. Um, I love the Iowatas. It's just because of how the gun is made. Uh, they're very robust guns. Um, they come with just one needle, one nozzle, uh, which is a point five, which I love. I also have. An, I, an Eclipse CS, which is a gravity feed gun, but this I converted from a 0.35 stock to a 0.5. So now it'll accommodate thicker materials so I can shoot um, thicker paints, plus I could lay out color a lot faster with this uh, gun. With that said, is that I actually have a much more custom gun that I, that I wanna came out a while back which is the custom CS. I love using this gun. It's just because it's just like, I mean, it's just like the CS, the regular CS with a smaller cup, but it's actually, this one has a taller cup, especially for body painters. What I usually do is that people tend to kind of, when you're mixing, when you're putting in color and then you find yourself putting a lot more color a lot more times, this actually has a bigger well, deeper well in there. So, um, a deeper well, so you can put more paint in there, so you're not reloading the gun as much. I love this gun. I wanna, unfortunately, I wanna took this off of the market. However, hopefully they bring it back with their new Vault series. Um, speaking of the Vault series that they have, my newest gun is a TH2. Huh? Huh? Uh, the TH2. Uh, the TH2 or base is basically kind of uh, 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 a bridge in between my miniature spray gun and my airbrushes, where it would give me, it would it would offer me a bigger well so I can base a body out really quick. I mean, I pretty much based out a body. I mean, it usually cuts it down to like one third the time, but not even half that. You know, um, it does have a bigger well. Uh, Corona Jennifer, have you ever tried using needle sharpeners for repair? Um, I, d I have used the, the needle, uh, the, the sharpeners, which works really well. Uh, it's not so much to replace your needles. What it is, it's basically if you're, let's say, in, a, in the middle of a job and you accidentally bend your needle. In a bind, yes, you can use it. But to replace it, what happens with those with the, with the sharpener is that when when um, the manufacturers sharpen the needle, it's actually to factory specs. So what happens now is that when you're grinding in that needle, it will fit into that nozzle where the orifice of the nozzle is is concerned. But the more you use that that repaired needle, is that it flares out the nozzle itself, where you have the nozzle, which is I'll show you that, which is this part right here, that flares out. I don't know if you can see it. I mean, the Iwata nozzles, they're actually very robust nozzles. This is actually a platinum alloy nozzle, and this will last you a while. Um, personally, I, can, I, the last, I can't even remember the last time I changed these nozzles. And I, I mean, I used the heck out of these brushes. Um, you know, I mean, with, with the CS, they actually have the same drop-down pressure fit nozzle, but it's uh, oh, actually with this one right here, I still have the, uh, the 0.5 in there. But with the 0.35, it's still a depth drop down pressure fit nozzle, but it's actually a, 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 a longer taper, you know. So I, um, I, li I like using the sharpener, like in just in a bind. When you're in a bind and definitely, you know, when you're in the job and you bend your needle, use it definitely. But uh, by, all means, by all means and purposes, it's not really meant to replace, you know, so you, I mean, it's not really to replace a needle itself, you know. So good question on that. I also have, okay. So going back, um, would I have my TH? Uh, you can see, 
I had these custom coded. Um, these are just my colors. They, like I'm so uh, drawn to to these colors right here, and I like uh, it. Just it just also gives you a certain brand, a certain identity when you when you paint. I guess um, you know have your own colors uh, that that your preference. But these are. Um, uh, in the in the firearms industry, it's a, it's a Cerakote. Uh, it's easier to clean, so when you have paint in there, it's easier to clean. Uh, I mean, compared with like, you know, I'm just as just like chrome, pretty much. So, this is what I have, and let's see here. Cool. So, excuse me. Um, all right. So that's, that's my equipment. Um, I also have, again, my compressor. I actually have a compressor that's already inside my box where I took um, Donna's tutorial on how to, on how to um, modify your art box, which is a great tutorial, which, um, which I am following. And then also I'm updating it. And hopefully I'll, in the next couple of weeks or so, I will be upgrading my I will be upgrading my box um, all right so we have we have a double action gravity feed which works really well um, some guns actually have what they call a single action gun um, people in the industry they re they use a single action gun especially for like temporary tattoos a lot of the times people try try to like use it it's it's really easy it's it's really simple setup especially for temporary tattoos you don't really need uh, a great amount of trigger trigger dexterity it's easier it's easier to clean as well but what you're lack is that you're lack in the, the the control of the gun itself that double action when you're pressing down you're pulling back that's that double action that you're having okay so um, that's what that, this and this is what we're uh, this is the gun that we're going to be using. I'm going to be demoing at the moment. Um, let's see here. So let's get started. I have my setup here, and let me just pull it up real quick. Okay. Let's see here. So what I have for my practice sheet, it's a, in the industry, it's called Pellon. What it is, it's a, um, it's, it's, it's a felt like fabric. Um, what dressmakers use, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like a, um, you know, that, that stiffener, that fabric stiffener in your lapel or in your collars, it's the same thing, but it's a thinner version of it. We in the, uh, in the airbrush industry, especially in the coast airbrush, use this a lot because we use it as like, made for practice. Um, more often than not, people tend to use this on, on newsprint. Um, they also use a uh, paper towel as well. Um, I like using this because of the fact that it, it is absorbent. And um, let's see, hold on. Let me just uh, turn on my compressor here real quick. All right. All right. So I like the fact that it's uh, it's very absorbent. And um, so when you can make like, when you make mistakes, especially when you're like the only the, the thing is is that when people are starting to airbrush. The most common um, do downfall is that the, the people get frustrated, you know, especially with the double action, and so that trigger where you're pressing down, you're pulling that, okay? The most common mistake what a lot of people do, especially when you're starting off, is that they let off onto the, the, the air itself. I, what you want to do is that you want to go pre press down constantly and you pull back while you're pressing down and then you push forward. What that is, that's your trigger dexterity right there, okay? A lot of the times I've seen, I've seen these is that when people tend to, tend to airbrush is that they press down, they pull back, and they do this. All right? What that does is that number, there's two things happens there. Number one, you're interrupting the flow of paint. What happens is that if you're interrupting the flow of paint, 
okay, paint accumulates on the front part of the gun, and when you, when you press down again, it spatters out. That's why it's like, oh my God, my, my gun is spattering. It was like, well, yeah, your gun is spattering because of what, of what the, the trigger, because of your trigger dexterity, you know? I mean, it's, it's, I mean, especially you want to be delicate, especially when people is that, I mean, it's, it's, it's your user error. It's not really user error. What it is is that, I mean, you just need to practice a little bit more I need to sharpen out those uh, those, those skills even even more. You know, I mean, I I still do it. You know, I mean, I like every time I do a gig, I practice my strokes, I do my exercises, I warm up, I stretch out. It's the same thing. You know, um, another thing too is that when you're um, when when common um, um, habit that I always see people is that they pick on their their gun you know they go like this and they pick on it you know the reason why you're picking is just because you have paint there the reason why you have paint there is just because that when you're pressing down you're pulling back you're interrupting the the flow all right i always tell people is that every time when you're airbrushing when you start airbrushing it's like how do you know when you get good how do you know when you've already reached that well you get good when you have that type of finger. All right. So uh, it's almost like a callus. I mean, it's like, you know, it's, um, I guess it's, um, it's a rite of passage, I guess. All right. So what we do is that, let's see here. So we start off with a couple of exercises. Um, let's see if I can get a good view here real quick. Pardon me real quick, and then let me move my, so I can, you, can, you guys get a, you get a better view. Uh, what we're doing here. All right, let's see here. Okay, so this is actually kind of like a look over my shoulder, which is a lot of people, which a lot of people love to do. Um, especially when I'm doing my, my live body paint, people tend to kind of like be close to me and want to see what it's like the, the artist's perspective, which is, uh, which I don't really mind, you know, um, sometimes you get like too close to it, but, um, all right, so let's start off here. So, um, with my airbrush, I don't have a regulator attached to it, but with my airbrush I actually have, since I'm so used to my setup already, I actually have a quick connect system where I'm actually clicking in, clicking out of um of each gun each different color you know and i also have a regulator here you know so if i'm pressing down it goes up all the way close all the way up all the way close so all right i usually go by the feel of it um i'm so used to it already so I mean, you get into like these nuances of what your equipment is, the more you spend time with it, um, the, the better you'll be, definitely. Uh, let's see here. Um, of course. Let me get my thing here real quick. So what we're doing first off is that when we're loading up the gun, um, you, know, you don't have to load it up all the way up, but and in this case, you know, for, for teaching purposes. Okay, what we usually do, I usually have like this, this, um, this habit of actually kind of spraying it on my, my arm, my, my hand for a little bit, you know, just kind of reset everything, see everything's doing well. Everything's going, everything's doing good. You know, what I need is that what I'm looking for is basically when I press down on it, I'm not getting any paint. Let's go back here real quick. Okay. So you could see me right there. All right. So we'll start. So with your, your basic strokes, we'll start with your basic strokes. First, your rat tails. The rat tails are basically from thick to thin in one stroke. From left to right, you want to practice. So 
see where I'm moving my body from left to right? What I'm doing is that this is actually an old shirt painter's technique because when we used to paint, it, what happens is that you're clipping your, your, um, your arm, your, your elbows in, into your body, you know? So what that does, it just kind of gives you a much more steadier, um, uh, much more steadier line of sight. Or much more steadier movement, you know? A lot of the times when people tend to use one hand, you know, they, I mean, I mean, I still use, I, I love using it with two hands. Some people use it with one hand, you know, which is fine. But when you're just starting out, you wanna do two hands. You wanna have, you wanna cup it, depending on where you, I mean, how comfortable, how comfortable you are. Some people paint like this, in front, some people people, uh, people paint on the side. What it is is that you're getting, um, what you're doing is that you're getting your comfort level down, where you're you're practicing where the gun sits. You know, I mean, I mean, I've I've know people I've known people who are actually I mean who are left-handed. So same sex, different line of sight. Of course, we also have depending really on the gun that you have. With this actually has a taller cup. I mean, having something straight off, you know, would. For, for my end would be uncomfortable, but for, for some people it might be comfortable, you know? So just find where your um, mode of preference is and then go from there. So with these is that I actually, I, I have the, the rat tails, all right? From thick to thin in one stroke, all right? But what you also wanna do is that you wanna do thick to thin one stroke from left to right or right to left. And see how I'm moving my, my body left to right, or I'm, I'm actually just having, I'm, I'm very uh, mechanical when I'm, you, when, I'm, when I'm painting, you know? Uh, a lot of the times, I mean, especially for um, temporary tattoo artists, you don't really need it, you know, because you're actually holding your, um, your, um, your stencil and then you're, you're holding up against, uh, up against the skin, which is fine, you know? Um, for live body painters, I find that it's much more of a show as well where you're actually, when, I, when I'm doing, like when I'm painting a model, I mean, it's almost a dance when, when people see you and people film you and stuff, you know that they're filming you. Of course, you, uh, you perform along with the model. So that's, what, that's one of my, you know, six secrets, I guess. And that's what I've kind of been known for. Um, so with the left to right and then right to left, what you also do is that you wanna have your up to down or down to up, okay? No, not. What you're doing is that basically what you um what you're doing is that you're eliminating your preference and where to start. You know how when you start handwriting, when you start to write something, it's usually left to right. All right, um, and then um, what happens is that if you're using the lines, a lot of the times, if you're if you're comfortable in and going from left to right, you're not comfortable going from right to left. What these exercises do is that it eliminates your preference on where to start. So you can start anywhere at any point and then start for, and, and at any point and then, and then, and then start a line from there. Um, do you move the airbrush closer to the target? Yes, I do move the airbrush closer to the target. Um, uh, what, uh, closer to the surface. What it is is that it's, when I also move left to right, I basically what I do is like I press down the trigger, okay, pull back, push forward, and at the same time, when I move from left to right, I actually go, go back out and then forward, you know? So it's basically you're, you're, you're moving on, on, on three different axes. You're moving, you're moving this way and this way, and then you're moving up or down, and then you're also moving your trigger back and forth. Um, it's a little bit, there's a lot, so there's a lot to, to kind of take sometimes, but I, that's why I, I recommend you using um, an absorbent surface like Pelon or a paper towel, but you know, paper towels right now are like gold. 
definitely. Um, but use Pelon. You know, Pelon, you can, you can find these at fabric stores. We at Coast Airbus sell these. They actually come in a pack of 50, you know. So you can just, you can fill this up with your, um, with your strokes. Um, a lot of the times, because when you're, when you first started out, you do this. You know, I'm oversaturating this right now. See, it's not dripping. See, unlike if you're if you're painting on, let's say, board or uh, or or um, anything that's non-absorbent, right? I mean, it just like drips. I mean, it just drips. Well, yeah. But see how like oversaturated that is. Now, okay, cool. You know, so it's a good, I mean, you want to learn, you want to learn with the right tools, definitely. And you want to learn with, um, with the right equipment, you know. So when you're using, um, when, you, when you're doing your, your trigger control, this is what you would, would go for. See how everything's pretty much um, straight. Okay. So now what you can do as well is that you can go left to right, right to left, left to right, right to left. So you're basically moving from one side to the other, you know. I mean, it's just like a dance. And at the same time, while moving left to right, right to left, I'm actually going back on my airbrush, forward on my airbrush, back on my airbrush, forward. And at the same time, I'm moving the trigger back and forth while constantly pressing down. The, the, the trick to this is you need to constantly press down. Okay, that's why, because a lot of the times, you're getting this. See that, that little spatter in there? I, don't, I can't even do it anymore. Yeah, see there's that spatter, you know, when you start up again, if you're interrupting. That's exactly what that is, you know? Um, so, so with that said, is that you want to always press down. So just press down, that's it. Go back. And forward, back and forward, okay? So with these exercises, is that now what you do is that you can actually make, yeah. So now what you can do is that you can make No, so now you can make stars out of it. Okay, so that's what one, that's pretty much, this is the main thing, your rat tails. Um, so you go back and forth. I, I always tell people, you know what, do these exercises for, for a month straight. I guarantee you, your trigger dexterity would be so sharp. Um, that's what we've, that's what we, what I did when I first started painting shirts, is that you know how to draw, you know, but the frustration factor lies upon, relies upon your ability because of what you see, you know, like, oh, it's not there yet, it's not there. Then, you know, go ahead and practice and you'll be fine. Um, the trick to it, one of the, the main thing is that really not to be frustrated with it. Because, you know what, when you're starting up with a new, especially with a new tool, everybody's doing really, really good. And you look on social media, every time, you know, how can they do this? Why can't I do this? You know, and then you invested all this money in, uh, in paint and supplies that... Um, like you always money these paint and supplies, and then now it's just sitting there. And I can't tell you how many times I have pe I, I've I've talked to people says, oh yeah, I invested in uh, X amount of money in the setup, and it's and it's sitting in uh, it, and it's sitting in my and it's sitting in my closet. And I'm like, oh well, you know what? It's not going to do you any good. You know, bust it out, open it, try it out. You know, like uh, I mean, it, it's a fun thing to do. Um, let's see here. All right. So what I the next one? So we have your rat tails, right? You'll be more proficient with that. Um, ne the next one that I always um, drill on huh, is, is um, a couple of other... Let's see here. All right. Let's see here. All right. So another one that I, um, that I always do would be your dots and your dashes. With the dots and your dashes, what this does, it 
Um, let me show you this. Well, I'm constantly always on. Again, you'll see that I'm doing this. Pressing down, paint, down, paint. So I'm, I mean, if you hear it, I'm pressing down and I'm going, I'm just pulling back the trigger ever so, like, ever so slightly and pushing it forward, always pressing down. What this exercise does is that, um, what this exercise does is that it gives you, uh, it, it sharpens out your hand-eye coordination and your targeting. Uh, Beverly Wilcox grants, where do you get individual regulators for the gun? Um, are you talking about this one right here? This is actually made by a company called Grex. I like using these, is this because on my, um, on my gun, on my setup, I don't have a regulator already, like I, like I said, but if you want to have a multiple gun setup or a multiple hose setup, that when you're regulating, let's say, with black or white, or if you're, because you're basing out, uh, if you're using to base out and you need a higher pressure, you can have a regulator, right, with this, instead of going in, like a, min, a, a regulator where your hose is, instead of having a regulator where, uh, where your setup is and putting, um, regulating up or down all the time, I have mine just all the way up and then I'm regulating it with this little puppy right here. Um, this is actually made by a company called Grex. It's a company here in uh, the United States. They're very robust. I love using these. I've used these for a number of times, you know, and then like I said, there you're off, on, off, on, you know, and then I just kind of go by the feel of, of how I'm doing. Or what the what the air pressure is, you know. So let's go on. All right. So now, once I have my dots, what I do is that. Okay. Now, when I once I have my dots, what I do is that I connect the dots. All right. When I connect the dots, what I do is that you can go this way. All right. You can connect the dots, but. You can do it this way, but what I always suggest is like to challenge yourself. So what you do is that you want to connect the dots, but then you want to connect random dots together. You know, what that does, it sharp, again, it sharpens out your skill and where you are and where you're going later on, you know, and then also it sharpens out your hand-eye coordination. It sharpens out, it sharpens out your, your, your targeting as well. So what I can do is I can do this one. You know, where I'm actually connecting the dots, but it's in no particular order, no particular sequence, but at the same time, it just moves everything, connects everything together. Because you can do, you can just go X, 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 and you can make a box out of, uh, you could make a box pretty much, you know? But what you're doing is that, Yes, you're getting into the monotony of things. You're getting into a flow of everything. But what you're doing is that you want to sharpen out more skills. So if by, by connecting these dots together in random order. What you do is that you're, all, you're, you're sharpening out your trigger dexterity as well. If you see here, all right, I did it in one stroke, really straight line. And here, what I do is I, I use the rat tails, all right? With the rat tails, these are just shorter strokes of what the long strokes that I did earlier, okay? Again, you want to do that. Because instead of doing a straight line, you want to rat tail it, okay? But in shorter strokes.
you can know you can also go up or down you know um, depending on your preference but challenge yourself uh, as far as skill is concerned challenge yourself so where you're pushing back pulling pull like pushing back and then like pulling back and pushing forward on the trigger itself okay So go this way, that way. Okay. Like up or down, down or up, you know. Left to right, right to left. Again. And if you hear, I still have, I always have my, um, my air on the entire time that I'm doing, you know. And this is where, this is where your compressor comes into play. Where your compressor, a lot of the times people use a small enough compressor where it's okay for what you're using. But what happens is that now it, it puts, like, you're putting out so much volume, so much air volume that the compressor is just too small for it to handle. So you want to match your compressor with your airbrush, with your airbrush setup, you know. Um, you could always go bigger, but a lot of the times, especially for body painters, you don't really want to be going too big uh, because what you're doing is that you're compromising the size and the port portability of it um, with the power that you have. So... Um, uh, I'll show you my compressor setup later on. It's actually kind of a custom um, setup that I have into my uh, into my box, but it's it's a stock compressor. Um, so, but what I, what I was saying is that if you're putting out so much air volume because you're also just pressing down all the time, what you're doing is that you're getting some moisture in your line. Uh, I actually have on my setup, I have a moisture trap in, in my line, and I can also put a moisture trap over here, but I find that the, um, how I use, like the way my setup is, uh, a moisture trap away from me is actually a lot better for me because it's not... Um, it's not in my way, number one, and uh, I have it all the way down there. And and if I do get some moisture in there, I'll probably drain that, uh, drain that, t t drain that moisture trap just a little bit, and I'm, and I'm okay. Okay, so we're about done with this exercise. Again, see left to right, right to left. Down, up. Okay. And you'll find that people tend to do this a lot. I even do this. You know, what it is, it's a habit because what you're doing is that you're also clear. I mean, if you, I mean, if you have, um, if you're working like a, a, a fear space sometimes, you know, you, 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 you get accumulation where the front part of it, so you just blow it out. What that does, it just cleans out that part of the gun even more, you know? Um, it's an old shirt painter's habit technique that we've been doing, we've been using for the longest time. Um, and this is before, uh, you know, like all the paints that are just, um, that are just, airbrush ready paints and some of them are like you I mean the consistency or something to be said so we we developed like a certain technique or a certain mannerism or a certain habit that we've just kind of carried over um, um, you know what whether whether or not you're painting shirts or you're painting a body or you're painting a, uh, you're painting a car or something you know um, all right so we're about done with this all right so this is what I was like telling you guys about so you can go, you can go left to right, right to left. Do your, do your, uh, your rat tails, in but in smaller strokes, smaller, shorter strokes. All right. So, again, along with your rat tails and along with um, your dots and your dashes, you know, you're still using the rat tails. You're still using, um, you know, like this stroke right here. What this is, what the dot is, is basically your rat tail not moving, all right? Because you're still, hold on, okay. You're still like pressing down, pulling back, and pushing forward, you know? So a lot of the times, um, 
Hello, Christina. I know you're late, but it's fine. Uh, but um, a lot of the times people tend to misconstrue my movements and how the, the, um, the, uh, the strokes are. It's just because of how my movement is. But I can go really slow, pushing back, pulling forward, you know, and then see the dots are a little bit bigger. What I can do is I can get closer to the painting surface and then get a smaller dot. Same thing. You know, I could even go smaller. All right, we can even go smaller. All right, so, I mean, it's just a matter of control, really, when you're pressing down, pulling back, and then just like pulling back, pushing forward, pulling back, pushing forward. So, again, these, these are just rat tails, but you're not moving. Because at the same time, if I'm doing this, same thing, you know. So I'm still moving from right to left and left to right. Um, so these are your basic strokes. Uh, that's, that's two of them. I also have a couple of them as well. Where, let me get this thing right here. Let me move this up. How's everybody doing so far there? <laughs> Donna was always like impressed with my uh, my moves here. It's the she's uh, she's seen it firsthand a um, co couple of times, especially when I um, when I paint. You know, I move my body back and forth and I rock my body back and forth. And usually after um, after the session, after the painting session, my thighs and my you know my my legs are killing. You know. Um, but also, let's see here. Uh, but it's a good workout. <laughs> now, once we have, so this is the, what is this? So we have the dots, we have the rat tails, we have the dots, we have the dots and the dashes, but they're also rat tails. Okay. Now, what we, uh, what, um, we could do as well is that we do the swirls. All right. What the swirls are basically like these. Okay. All right. So, um, again, these are straight lines, you know, one length, you know. But you want, again, you want to challenge yourself again. What you do is that you want to incorporate that rat tails. You want to inc incorporate that, um, that thick to thin in one stroke, all right? So what you're doing is that with these movements right here, you're, you're, you're basically pressing down and pulling back just ever so slightly, and then you're getting a line, definitely. You can go, if you have a line, which is like that much, it's gonna be fuzzy, right? But if you go close, it's gonna be sharp, okay? Again, fuzzy, but I'm not moving the sugar forward, but I'm just moving the, the airbrush forward, sharp. See? But I'm not move what I'm doing is I'm not moving the trigger back and forth. I'm just keeping the trigger at, at its at the same um, um at the same throw. Alright? But this is good. But what you want to do again is that you want to challenge yourself to where you're actually getting the rat tails within that stroke. What I mean is that you're doing this. Let me uh, switch to a new uh, thing here real quick. Let's uh, switch to a thing. Okay. Um, hey, Jose, how you doing? Hopefully, I, yeah, definitely, um, um, definitely, I get to suck. Hopefully, I get to see you again in Fabeic. That was so much fun, even though it was really brief. Um, I love, I love going to like conventions. You know, um, competing is one of them, which is which what which is one, uh, which is so much fun. I actually competed my first time at the W uh, the Worlds uh, about three years ago. 
just went there, no assistant, just by myself. Loved it, you know, and at the same time, I get to travel, meet people, and, and I mean, it was amazing, you know. Um, what size of needle are you using? Do Iwata or Pache's numbers the same? I use Pache guns primarily. Okay. Um, they're about 0.5s, but they're generally about the same size, but you can't really switch between brands. So with Pache's, if you're using a VL, which is a Pache VL, which is a bottom feed gun, or you're using either the Millennium or, um, or, any, or even the Talon, which is the one that has a gold handle, generally, if you're using it for body painting, you want to use the medium, uh, the medium tip. So with the Pache VL, it's a number three. The Millennium actually only has one tip right now, which cut, which is a which is a, which is a Pache VL number three. With the Iwatas, it's a 0. 0.5. This is a this is a um, an Eclipse BCS. A BCS comes in a 0. 0.5 uh, needle and nozzle size. But what I do was that when you have the newer guns that they have, which is the CS, it comes in a 0. 0.35. Um, it works really well, however, for body painting is that I find that a 0.5 version works really well. So what we do is that in Coast Airbrush, we have what they call a makeup conversion kit, where we change the needle, the nozzle, and the nozzle cap from a 0.35 setting to a 0.5. What that does is that opens up the aperture just a little bit so you can shoot thicker material through it. So you can bait, like if you, uh, it, it's easier to apply when you're base coating. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, this gun right here, actually has a 0.35 in it because um, I primarily use this for like medium medium detail a lot of my um, a lot of my layouts and everything I use a bigger gun um, all right cool. so again with like the the thick the, like you so you're using thick to thin strokes the rat tail strokes but you do, now you're doing it in a different uh, a different dynamic so you're swirling it So, so what I'm doing is that I'm, it's the same thing. These guns, right, this stroke right here is the same stroke as this. Rat tails, the same thing, but it's just in a different, like it's just, I mean, it's just in a different manner where you're moving it up and down and at the same time you're moving it back and forth. People like, again, like how I move, you can do it, you can do it this way as well. Where you just kind of you're just moving your 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 hands or your, I mean your hand that's clipped into your body back and forth up and down or back and forth again because of where I um, because of where I how I learn which is like the um, which is like much more towards like the uh, the chaser side of it it's much more dynamic when when I move um, it it feels like it, there's a lot of flow to it more color. So what these strokes are is that, um, let's see here, Magna, uh, thanks, yes, I use three most of the time, I guess practice is what I need to keep, uh, to keep better control, most definitely, practice is the way to go. Um, like I like I like I said in um, at the beginning uh, of, of this um, uh, of this video is that even I use this every time I every time I um, um I start you know I, I, I mean like like I said like when you're when you're working out or something you do your stretches you know I mean this is similar to what the stretches are um, you're getting yourself reacquainted you know um, it's just because sometimes variables happen where. It's going to be too cold, so the paints are going to be a little bit thicker, you know. So you want to you want to acclimate yourself, um, you know, and like with your setup as well. Um, you know, so yeah, so you have your swirls up or down, okay, and then you do the reverse, all right, and then I also do something to sort of this.
you know. Again, it's the same. It's the same dynamic, but it's just a different stroke. What you're doing is that you're you're, and at the same time, you're also breaking the monot breaking um breaking up the monotony of just oh my god rat tails again, you know. Oh my god, like um, uh, targeting again. So uh, just fill this up. I usually tend to fill this up, the entire thing, you know. Um, if you wanna, you know, if you wanna practice another stroke, you can just go up or down, you know. You know, you can do stars. So, so these are pretty much your basic strokes. Um, four basic strokes, pretty much, and that encompasses everything that you're going to be using with that that can be achieved with this gun. Because when you're using um, when you're using these strokes you can go really detailed or you can fog it on. A lot of times, another thing too is that, um, oh, with Donna as well, that great uh, tip, Donna. Donna says like, she likes using coloring books to break up the skills, definitely, because with that is what, when you have a line, you know, like let's say with a coloring book, you have like, there's just a target that you, that you have as well. Um, so, you know, you can have, you can do your shading, you can do your light and your shadow, you know, um, which will which will go uh, which will dive into uh, in a bit, you know. But let's see here. So once we have the skills that we need, is that we move on to the shading part of it. The shading part of it. This again. This is like I was saying. This is a much more go back into, again, the rat tails. What it is is that, and this is what I see with a lot of people as well, is that what happens like when you shade something, they go full blast onto the painting surface. And when you go full blast on a painting surface, what you're doing is that number one, you're wetting the surface more so it dries a lot. Uh, it dries a lot longer, especially if you're doing tattoo, temporary tattoos, or if you're doing um, uh, if you're doing body painting. You know where you're saturating so much of the surface. Now it's just now it's just full of paint. You're wasting paint. Number one in your core. You're also you're. I mean you're also wasting time. So a lot of the times, if you're it, this, we're going again. We're going back to the rat tails. Okay. So let's say we have a box, right? So when we have a box, we're shading stuff. I don't know if you can hear my air. My air is always constant, you know? And it's always constant, it's always on, all right? Oh, also, what I'm doing is that with the rat tails, I'm actually, again, pressing down, pressing down, pulling back, pushing forward. Always pushing back, pushing forward. I'm not doing this. See these, these, these. See these lines right here? That's what they call dumbbells, you know? So what it is is that that's a hallmark of you not, but not, uh, pulling back and pushing forward onto the trigger itself. You want to push, pull back, and you push forward your trigger. You know. So what you're doing is like you're gradually building a line. If you want to do a one line, then definitely just do one line, and that's it. But what you can do is that you can build a line, right? And when you're shading, you're shading, you're shading from a darker. Um, a, a, a darker point to a lighter, uh, to the lightest light. So what you're doing is that you're moving your trigger back and forth, you know? And you're not just having, like let's say, you're not just doing this. Because if you're doing that, see where it's number one, it's uneven, okay? This is a much more gradual uh, way of, of applying paint because in the same time, if you're 
gradually applying the paint, what you're doing is that you're layering it down. Number one, number two is like you're not using a lot of product. So you're saving a lot of product, product as well. You know, especially, and then this will come in handy, especially if you're doing, if you're doing a body painting where you're doing a cast shadow or something, or you, you, you're using a reflective shadow of some sort, you know, um, you'll see that in a lot of works, uh, dimensional body works, like Alex Hansen does that a lot, where he, where he, where he, where he transitions his shadows so much, so, you know, um, like Avi Ram does that as well. So what that does, it gives you more dimension. And those are the people, those are the examples of people who actually has, have excellent, um, um, excellent trigger control, you know? Um, so you, you know, you, you, you practice. That's, that's how it is. Um, you know, it's, it's a, and then you can go, you can go with like shapes as well. So we can have a round shape. And then see what a round shape is I'm gradually just rounding it out. And then when it comes here, I'm putting it more paint, less paint, more paint, less paint, okay? Now what I'm doing, again, I'm rocking my trigger back and forth. So what these are again, these are again just the, these are just rat tail strokes. Cause you can break down the strokes into its, uh, um, into its own elements. And I hear that uh, Alex will be a guest on May 1st. Yay. Yeah, the first time I met Alex, Hansen was uh, my the, his um, headpiece making class in uh, Vegas. So I did a turnaround in Vegas. Amazing artist and learned a lot from him. So again, when you're um, the, and this is what this is what we what what Donna has fostered with the, the with the art with the artist community, especially when uh, with her product Proyer, that we're, uh, she's not shy on. Um, teaching other people, you know, how to, uh, like how, I mean, like teaching other people in the industry who wants to learn, which I believe that this will further our industry because if we share knowledge with each other, I mean, even with me, I mean, I've been airbrushing for, for a number of years. I, mean, I kind of go, well, you know what? Yes, that works really well, you know? So um, you constantly learn. Uh, it's you, 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 you talk with people and that's why having a community of, of artists is, is, is important. Um, especially now with, with what's happening where we're social distancing, but I think with social media now is that uh, we've it's kind of dr drawn us closer to, uh, to, to each other. So uh, let's see here. May see how you hold your hands. Um, so uh, when I hold my airbrush, I hold it this way. Okay. So I cup it, but then, and then when I paint, I usually have my pinky out because I have it like almost a, um, kind of a mall stick, you know, but it's also, it's also to see, to kind of steady my hand, especially when you have a model that kind of wiggles a lot, you know, where you kind of go, stop, but, you know, but that's how it is sometimes, but, um, but yeah, you know, yeah, so that's, that's how I, that's how you kind of, you know, you can do this, you can do that. A lot of the times, I mean, I've seen people paint like this, which is good, you know? I mean, it's just, again, it's a matter of preference. I mean, some people have steadier hands than, than more, than, than most, you know? Um, I believe uh, Yulia Laslava paints with, with one hand, you know, which is, again, it's another, she's another um, uh, artist from, uh, from Russia who I had the uh, privilege of meeting at the, World's, at the World Body Painting Festival. Um, if you guys are into, uh, uh, into body painting, definitely I, I encourage you to travel, um, do, do the conventions, you know, do the competitions, even though, oh, well, I'm not going to win. Just go, go experience. You'll learn so much because you learn so much by talking to people. Um, you know, um, I've I've had the the um, the um, 
the privilege of of meeting Craig Tracy, and then he's you know he's become a good friend of mine uh, now. And then we've you know we, every time when I when I go to uh, New or- when I went to New Orleans, he said that like yeah, just come down, you know, just like say hi, and just, we hang out. So you 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 form those friendships, you know, um, that that work within the community. Uh, there's 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 a couple of people. Um, you know, like at Skin Wars, well, basically the, the people at Skin Wars already, we've, you know, we've, we've met already and we've hung out, which is, which is so awesome. They're really cool people. I mean, they, I mean, they, they're passionate people. So they're, 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 they always open to share their knowledge, you know, like we, what we have here. There we go. And there. How much, how much time do we have? What time do you have? Sorry. Ah, uh, oh, you got a clock ready? Sweet. That was quick. All right. So, um, yeah, it's been an hour already. Wow. All right. So that's what we, um, that's what we have for our, um, for our, um, um, to recap that, um, our strokes. All right. Rat tails. Sorry. We're kind of getting over. I'm sorry. Talking. Okay. Your dots. And your dashes. Okay, your swirls. And your shading. Okay, so just, just practice this. You're, you should be fine, you know. <laughs> yeah he's he's funny so um yeah so that's um those are pretty much your basic strokes uh, what i always another thing too is that when you're using your basic strokes is that you would also definitely want to know how to clean it you know i always um let's see here Oh, one more thing, really quick, is that, um, so what I'm known for is my stencils, uh, my stencil work, well, you know, one of them. But what I do is that if you're using a stencil, what a lot of the times people tend to use a stencil, they go like this. Okay? A lot of the times when you're using your stencil, you can also use bits and pieces of the stencil yourself, you know? And at the same time, you're just lightly, um, spraying just the edge of it. What that does, it gives more dimension onto your piece itself, you know? So, that's, that's it. Really quick, okay? I know we're like over the time, sorry. But um, let's see here. Now, what I do is, uh, I know, sorry, Rick. So, if we go, when you go to the, the gun cleaning, let me, yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So, when we do our gun cleaning, what I usually do is I have three different, like I have pretty much paper towel, boop, you know. Um, I made this myself, which is like kind of a, a, a spray out bottle, but you don't have to have a spray out bottle, you know, because you could just go this way, clean out your gun, okay? But what I always have is that I have this, when I clean out my gun, you do what they call a flushing motion. Where Okay. Goodness. 
and you're fleshing it out. Okay, what this technique is, is back flushing, okay? But when you back flush, you don't want to back flush way too much. You want to press down, bubbles up. Okay, because if you back flush way too much, what happens is that the paint goes back here all the way down to the trigger, and then now you need to clean out your gun more regularly, okay? But what is this is just, you're just doing that. See, now it's clear, okay? I have... Just for right here, or you do, you're pressing down, you're pulling back, you're flushing it out. <laughs> yeah, Alex, you just buy another gun, no cleaning. Good. <laughs> Not as like poor folks that have like, you know, a couple of, a uh, couple of guns and stuff. Alex Hansen. Miss you, brother. So I had the pleasure of uh, hanging out with Alex Hansen post, uh, post uh, Worlds, and it was so much fun driving from Austria to, uh, to Rome. And uh, that was so much fun. Again, the, these are just one of the things that when you travel and then you meet people and you meet like other artists, you, 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 you form a bond, you know? And uh, it's, it's good. So, see, now it's clean. All right, very cool. So, that's how you clean it. Um, let's see here. Okay, so, um, let's see here. All right, so I hope you guys learned uh, just a little bit, if uh, not a lot, you know, which is, uh, which was which what I hope. Um, hopefully that also boosts your, your confidence as far as um, what you can do with um, uh, an airbrush as well. Um, again, I would love to, I would like to, to thank Donna for um, giving, us a, uh, giving us an avenue, uh, like artists like me, for art, with artists like me and even artists who wants to learn about um, that more about the, the, the airbrushing and how, how to apply and, and how to use it. Thank you again, Donna, for that. Uh, also, I'm, like, I'm very grateful for her for her support. Um, Iwatas are uh, I, uh, you know one of the, the best guns that I've actually used. Uh, they don't give me guns. I buy my guns just to you know be clear with that. Um, also, um, you know, it's just um, it, a lot of the times, you know, when people are giving guns and stuff like that, that's the only guns that they use. So, again, thank you so much for that. I also would like to um, to dedicate this um, uh, today for uh, to my dear friend, uh, Mike Lavalle, who just passed away yesterday. He, he, he was actually a, a titan in the industry. He's the one who, uh, who in the airbrushing side, he... Um, he um, uh, pioneered uh, the the tr the true fire technique, and unfortunately he uh, uh, he he passed away yesterday. So I would love to dedicate this um, this this episode to him. Such a great friend, such a good mentor. Um, but um, yeah, so thank you, thanks again um, so much for for for, uh, for 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 watching, and um, I'm very grateful for you guys spending time with us today. Um, I always say that to always be grateful. And then uh, I always say that with passion, love, dance, play. And <laughs>